What is up guys, Tim Murray here. In this video we will be continuing on with custom light shows and starting to get into the more advanced stuff. In the last video we went over each MIDI effect and what it does in a lighting situation. To watch that video first, click here now, or if you're on a mobile device, check the link in the description. In this video we'll be going more in depth about MIDI effect tracks and some of the more advanced things we can do with them, and also the basics of MIDI mapping. So let's jump straight into Ableton Live. In the last video in this series, we looked at the basic idea of the MIDI effect track and also the Keyzone editor. So you should already know that the MIDI effect track is essentially a folder for MIDI chains, allowing us to create different light shows for each button. This is all we really need to know if we just want some different lights for some of our buttons on our MIDI fighter or launch pad. But what if we want to have different tabs or banks for different sections of a song? What if we want to be able to control the banks by using the launchpad or MIDI fighter's side buttons? Well to do that, it's relatively simple, and to do that we need to know how the Chain Selector Editor works. Much like the Key Zone Editor, the Chain Zone Editor allows us to create different chains, and then we can select which one we want by using the Chain Selector Ruler here. This combined with the Key Zone Editor allows us to create different effects chains for the same button, but then we need a way to move this Chain Selector Ruler without physically using our mouse. This can be done by opening up the MIDI Effects Macro Controls using this little button here. This will bring up 8 knobs which we can map to anything in the MIDI effect rack, including the Chain Selector Ruler. To do this, we need to select the Map button here. You will notice that this turns some of the things on screen green. Anything that is turned green means that it is able to be mapped to the macro controls of that MIDI effect rack. To map something to a macro control, in this case I'll be mapping the Chain Selector Ruler to Macro 1, simply select the green item that you want macro controlled and then click the Map button under whatever macro that you want to control the item with. Now you should see that Macro 1 has been renamed to what it is mapped to, in this case, Chain Selector. Also, you should notice that in the Macro Mapping browser in the top left, that a mapping called Chain Selector has appeared with some information beside it. The part we will be dealing with is the minimum and maximum values. By default, it has selected 0 as the minimum value and 127 as the maximum value. There is no point having this many different chains for one button in this case, so we will be perfectly fine selecting 1 as our maximum. This means that past the halfway point on our macro knob it will move the chain selector ruler from chain 0 to chain 1. This means that we have created the possibility for different banks for different sets of lights. Anything in the chain 0 line will play when the macro is in the minimum position, and anything in the chain 1 line will play in the max position. This is also the same for audio effect racks and instrument racks, as they both have a chain selector section. But we still haven't got a way to control the chain selector ruler with an external MIDI device like the launch pad or MIDI fighter. So that's where the MIDI mapping mode comes into play. By clicking this MIDI button here, or pressing Ctrl M on a PC or Command M on a Mac, Ableton will appear to turn blue in a lot of places. Like the green colour before, these are all of the parameters that can be MIDI mapped to controllers, which is basically everything. To MIDI map to an external controller, select the item that you want to MIDI map, in this case it is the Chain Selector macro, and then interact with the control that you wish to assign to that macro. This could be turning a rotary encoder on a MIDI fighter twister, or pressing a side button on a launch pad, for example. If we assign the macro control to this button here on the launch pad and exit out of the MIDI mapping mode, pressing this button will toggle between the minimum and maximum values. This is a good technique for if you only need to cycle between two banks, but you can't use this mapping for any situations with over two banks. If we go back to the chain selector ruler mapping and change the maximum to 2, the MIDI mapping for this should also automatically increase to 2 by itself, but don't quote me on that. We can now see that by pressing the button that we assigned earlier, that it completely skips out chain 1. This is because the mapping cycles between the minimum and maximum values and not in increments. If you want complete incremental control, you'll have to assign the chain selector to a knob controller. But this is not the easiest way to cycle between chains, as you will have to be precise with where you move the knob to make sure that you get the right chain. Good thing there is another way to map to multiple buttons. We can just delete the previous MIDI mapping here by selecting it and pressing the delete button. Now if we press and hold this button here, and then press this button down here, this has created another type of MIDI mapping. Much like the tab buttons on a MIDI Fighter 3D, this has given us the ability to change the macro control in certain size increments. Since we had three different banks, I assigned the macro to three buttons, so the increments will be perfectly set for those chains. But trying to set up three buttons for four chains will of course not work, as the increments are the wrong size. You can choose as many different increments as you want, but something to take into account here is the layout of your MIDI controller. If you try to map on the square pads in an upwards pattern, this is not only going to map the buttons that you pressed, but also the notes in between those two buttons. Luckily the side buttons on the launch pad and MIDI fighter are all one note apart, so mapping to the side buttons isn't an issue, but it is still something you should know. 
With all of this in mind, this is how we can create different banks on the launch pad. Using the side buttons to control the chain selectors in audio, MIDI and instrument racks, you can now easily change between sounds or packs. Now before this video ends, I will show you a different kind of mapping on the MIDI fighter. If you're not aware of this, it might confuse you if you accidentally do it, so I'll clear it up now. On the MIDI fighter's arcade buttons, assigning it to things is a little different. This is because the MIDI fighter's buttons not only send note data, but they also send momentary MIDI messages at the same time. Therefore, to assign a button to toggle bypass on an effect, we need to go into MIDI mapping mode, select the command to be changed, press and hold the button to be mapped, and then exit MIDI mapping mode while still holding the button. This will assign the command to the note value, so pressing the button once will go to the maximum value, and pressing it again will go to the minimum value. This is how the launchpad worked. But, if you want to make a momentary switch so the effect is only on when the button is pressed down, enter MIDI mapping mode, select the command to be changed, and then simply press and let go of the button you want. This assigns it to the button's CC value, which will make it a momentary switch. This will now only trigger the effect if you hold the button down. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if it was helpful, subscribe for more originals, tutorials and more, and as always, have a wonderful day. Timmy out.